The addition of PDG and TOPS in general Houdini has been really huge, and I think it's really, really awesome. Again, especially if you did the previous version of Rigids when we did um, wedging in that one, it was a lot more cumbersome, and this is this is way slicker. I thought you were going to see either way, whether or not you knew the old way. The new way is great. So in the right side here, I have my SIM thing open. In the left side, I have my actual top net. Um, actually, let's also let's let's change piece version to two now, the high res ones. Because this is going to be all about, you know, setting it and forgetting it and letting it run on its own. So we might as well use the nice high res ones. So let's make a wedge. So here in the tops area on the left, oh, it's running some kind of simulation right now. Oh, it's it's reconstructing the uh, the actual constraints. Okay. So as I was saying, let's make a wedge. Press L to keep everything together. And I would point out real quick, this local scheduler here, you can just make that go somewhere else if you want. Uh, the only thing this is really going to do for us is this total slots. PDG and TOPS are all about generating work items. Like if I have to render a frame, that's a work item or what have you. So what's so great about it is that it will use all the processors on your computer to do this stuff as efficiently as possible. Nonetheless, you might still want to limit how many slot, how many CPUs it can use. So you have like equal to CPU count less one, meaning use as many as you can, keeping one that will actually let me do stuff still. Custom, or just the equal to the quarter of the total CPU count, which is the default, should be pretty safe. So in any case, wedge. Again, wedging means change a parameter or two or whatever in our actual scene somewhere, but have try different values and report on the results. So in our case, I'm curious, we've seen very different results on this glue cluster strength. You know, we started at 10 before, or 100, I think, and we got up to 10,000. What if we went higher than that? I don't know. What if this versus um, the propagation iteration gives different results? That's what the kinds of things we can explore with the wedge. So without further ado, I'm going to say, let's wedge an attribute. We're just going to come up with an attribute. We're going to name it ourselves. This is not referring to anything that's already in the scene. We're just coming up with it. So glue strength is going to be, and we can do multiple samples within a range or whatever. One of the huge improvements here is that we can arbitrarily say, I want three wedges, let's say, which is what we'll do to begin with. I want three wedges, and I want them to specifically be three numbers from this value list. So one, two, three. So I'm just going to choose some values. So I might say 5,000, 10,000, and 15,000. And there you go. So this now, glue strength, is a attribute we can now use as a global variable elsewhere. And to prove that, if I go to glue cluster, and there it is, my 10,000, I'm going to put at glue strength. What does that resolve to? Well, nothing yet. In order for this to take effect, we need to cook this node. This is an important idea in, t in TOPS and PDG, where a node is Dirty, meaning it needs to be recooked. Cooked means it's executed. So I'm going to say, so shift V, dirty and cook this node, is basically shorthand for saying redo and execute this node. So shift V makes it look like this. What are these three dots? These three dots are three work items. They refer to the fact that there's three different wedges. Now when I click this, watch what happens. 15,000, 10,000. 5,000. It's these three things. That's what these are. By middle clicking on it, you can see some, some information. There's the glue strength value. Ba -ba -ba -bum. And there's this also this idea of a wedge index. So 0, as you can imagine, 1, and 2. So that's the identifier of those work items. So this is how we're going to start it off.
we're going to have this run other nodes with this value changed. Now to do some testing, I'm going to say let's make our frame range be fairly short. We'll bring it back to being 120 later on. But come on. What is it doing? For some reason it's redoing the constraints for some reason. In any case, we want it to be shorter because we we're going to run three short sims just to make sure that this works at all. So with the wedge done, we want to do a ROP fetch. A ROP fetch, kind of like how we saw earlier when we were doing the fractured stuff, we'll go find a ROP and run it. In our case, I want to run our sim. So this file cache here will be what I want to run. And specifically, like before, it's this on the inside that I want. So let's put that there. So when this runs, it's going to actually, it's going to run this once for each wedge. Now there's a few other things we need to set up. This is a simulation, so change it to frame range. We also want to do all frames in one batch because we don't want every core in our computer doing a different frame of our simulation. I mean, that would be great if that worked, but it doesn't make any sense. Every frame depends on the result of the previous frame. So we have to say all frames in one batch. And that's pretty much it. So now, if I save it, I'm going to press Shift V on this, and you're going to see a whole lot of dots in here that somehow finish very fast. So one thing we'll need to set up, at least, is the fact that this file cache sim here needs to be in terms of our wedge. Right now, it would just save everything on top of each other. So that um, wedge index number we were talking about, let's incorporate that into our file path here. So I'm going to put w and then a backtick and say wedge index, backtick forward slash. So it doesn't find it because it doesn't exist yet. But now you can see if I resolve it, it'll say w1 for this one, w0 for this one. So you can see how the different things in here, the different frames, are in terms of that. So whenever we do deal with cache stuff, we can go delete this node's result from disk, if there are any, do shift V on this again, and now run it. Now you can see it's actually thinking. So what's, what, are we, what are we looking at? I love these little displays. They're like little Star Trek uh, control panels. This is the node this is the work item that's currently being worked on. So three different processors on my computer, at least, are, or there's three I should just say, are currently chewing on this. So you can see that's what the three here is, and there's 69 to go. So that's 72 in total. Why is there 72? Well, because there's 24 frames, and there's three wedges. So again, this wedge is the first 24, this is the second 24, and this is the third 24. So that's pretty awesome. Why is it taking so long to do the first frame? Because it's actually starting Houdini in the background for each processor. These are running as separate instances of Houdini in the background. And it's taking however long it needs to take to do them. Obviously taking a little bit longer because we switched to the pieces version number two. But that's what this is. These dark circles are the ones that are done. The light green one is the one that it's currently working on. I'll look one more time. I'm really surprised that this isn't showing up. Probably if I had a better... This is the thing with Windows, right? It's just not showing me the right thing. Oh well. Either way, it's working. We can go over to our data area here. So if I go to Rigid's 2 data and see that I have my sim area, you'll see version 0. You'll see the two, the three wedges. These were caches from before back when we initially cached our stuff. I'm just going to delete that now. And you can see I have wedge number zero here, wedge number one is filling up, and wedge number two. This is a big advantage of saving all that memory by doing instancing. Now that my sim takes up less memory, I can actually fit multiple copies of the entire sim in memory. Hopefully you'll be able to too. If you can't, you'll have to either run less wedges or you might have to dial back 
um, you know, which pieces version you're using so that it actually has less pieces in your sim. Anyway, I'm gonna let this finish and we can, we'll talk more in a minute. All right, so it's all done. So what's a cool thing, a cool thing we can do is if we visualize our, well, let's say we visualize our proxy sim itself on frame 24, the last frame that we simmed, we can switch between our caches just by clicking on this. See? So we had different results by tw frame 24 depending on the strength of the glue. Hard to really get a strong sense of the differences yet because it was only 24 frames in, but you can agree that by clicking on this, we are switching between the different caches. Pretty sweet. So let's move on to Actually, I, before we move on, if I try to recook this node, even if I dirty and recook this node, you'll see it doesn't do anything because it found the caches on disk. Each of these work nodes knows where it wrote files to. See it here? Output. There's the exact file. This is why the PDG and TOPS are so robust, is that it knows all this stuff. So it didn't, if I try to recook something downstream later and I say, okay, do it, unlike ROPS, which would just say, okay, run everything, this will actually look to see what needs to be done. If you do want it to delete these files, you can either right click here and go to delete this node's results from disk, or honestly, or I should say obviously, you can just find them in here and, and delete them yourself. Interestingly, um, I'm going to I was going to say, when you load Houdini, it doesn't remember the last thing you clicked on here. So let's say I'm like, for the rest of the lesson, I'm just going to use this wedge. I'm going to use this wedge for everything. So I save my file, and I quit. And then, now that my file has been reopened, we can see, it's like, oh no, it's erroring out, and it didn't work. Well, it's because this wedge is now uncooked. If I recook it with a Shift V, you know, it doesn't really do anything to make these wedges. Now I can click these again. Now I can get back to work after I've clicked this. And the same thing still applies for here. If I try to recook this, it still will be done immediately because it will just see that the files already exist. So there you go. So now let's actually make little quick preview renders.